Trump came out. Let's look at Albertus. Again, AYP for white students, Caucasian students, they made it. Economically disadvantaged kids made it. Made, uh, we made math, AYP for special needs students. We made it for attendance. We made AYP in seven out of eight areas. We did not make it in reading for a group of students who again run the gamut of handicapping conditions, autistic, hearing impaired, emotionally uh, troubled students, LD students, a range of kids, a variety of needs. And for us to be singled out, saying this is a score improvement, without explaining that it's for a small sliver of kids and not the full school, I think again is dis disingenuous, misinformation, misleading, and I've got a real problem with that. And again, I want to highlight that this was talked about extensively in public. Dr. Manolo only came out and did a presentation. Uh, Mr. Bauer asked him a couple questions about that, I think, right? Being a bulldog you are, too. Um, <laughs> what, Mr. Rinaldi, under the gun, so to speak, right there you are, Ron, right? You can play the next day, but we, you know. But the bottom line is we all agree that we want to make sure that our kids are getting the best education possible. And I'm just going to wind up by saying, you know, I really get passionate about our school. And if somebody wants to compare, and I'm going to say, our schools, and I mean our schools, and if somebody wants to say, I've got a school, or we've got a school, and school improvement, well, then I tell you what, let's look at the newest school in town, folks. Let's look at them. If somebody wants to use test scores, I'm not going to say that, that school's inferior Albertus. I'm not going to attack that school at all. But when you look at test scores, that's all I have to say, Mr. Bell. Change the subject a little bit. Well, this 
us. There are some questions and a couple came up tonight by, by one of the residents. I just wanted uh, to find a sign where it says how he's doing on these issues. One was the busing, the little uh, the 1.5 miles. As I mentioned, and I think I answered Mr. Stoltz, lots of things are under consideration in the budget, Mr. Polo Cano. Certainly, as we noted last year, safety is going to be an issue. I mean, it's going to get down to, that's a $53,000 item. I mean, if there's any way we can work with that in the budget, we'll, we'll try to do that as much as we can. But however, I mean, you people up here are going to have to vote on something. And uh, the fact of the matter is we'll give you a list of priorities and we'll have to make a determination at that time. Uh, regarding the Wednesday afternoon, I could be wrong, but I, I remember when the board was interested in hiring me, I started to pay attention to what was going on in East Penn, as most people would when taking a job. And I do believe that somewhere between the time when I was hired and when I actually arrived, Mr. Nolo, who was an assistant superintendent, gave some kind of report to the board regarding early dismissal and what the relative cost would be. Now that does not preclude us uh, from revisiting that report. And you know, with the wonderful uh, relations we have with the EPEA, um, there's, I don't think there's anything in agreement that would preclude it. I think there are some contractual issues and some past practice that we need to take a look at. But if the numbers are okay, then we can certainly sit down uh, with the board, sit down with the association, take a look at that. Now whether that's doable or not, I don't know, but I think we can we can go back and revisit and look at those numbers at some point. Thank you. And uh, another question is, I gave Mr. Glancy some information about webcasting, and I was wondering what the status of that was. Well, we have to, we did this about two or three years ago. We can certainly visit revisit that, and uh, we'll get an updated numbers for Mr. Polcano, like everything else we have to the board, and if the board decides they want to do it, they can do it. Thank you. Okay. And uh, we're still, still an interest for more information, and one of it was the list of unfunded mandates, or underfunded mandates, and also with that, maybe some costs associated with that. Well, we'll do the, well, I'm sorry, we'll do the best we can. Some, some of the unfunded mandates um, uh, are hard to put a dollar value, but I can tell you, at least the special education, which is my biggest uh, concern, it's been since I've been in superintendent right now, the feds are only uh, funding special ed costs at 17%. They should be in the neighborhood of 40%. I'll give an example. Uh, thanks to the hard work of Mrs. McCarrick and her staff, we just put in, we just got, $149,000 in contingency funds. However, we were eligible for about 880, 800. So we got 16% back. So for those who can do the math, that's a lot of money, and who's paying for that local taxpayers? Not the, it's an issue, but special ed costs keep rising and rising. And at some point, uh, the state's gonna adjust this when, you know, when we hear from the governor that he didn't increase, he didn't cut special ed, well, Thank you very much. But let's get a realistic picture of what's going on. And we continue to lobby senators and uh, congressmen in Washington. And every once in a while, we get a, we get a good group of people almost there and almost push in um, so that special ed will not be discretionary funding. Um, other things, uh, we'll have to look at the list and put a dollar value uh, on as much as we can. I think we. Mr. Earl just sent me a list on, an update list on the front of me, somebody did, not too long ago. Yes. Right. So we'll, we'll see if we can put just an estimate, Mr. Paul McCann, on how much those items may cost us, okay? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, another one, another issue that's come up a few times is uh, concerned about union dues deductions. There's no cost for that. I don't know why that would be. There's simply no cost to that. That's been, people have been doing that since um, we were able to organize in Pennsylvania since 1972, I do believe, 1970. That's been associated with every district I've worked in, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. As far as I'm concerned, it's never been an issue. It certainly doesn't cost us anything to do that. 
Well, I, I think the concern was that money ends up in the campaign fund of candidates. It's not my issue. I'm not a member of the union. Concern we had was the check register, and I was glad this weekend to see on the website with the agenda for tonight's meeting was a list of the checks. And thank you for that. And that is extent my question. Um, one of the things that I, I feel to talk about, and I think what we're going to do is, is I'll work with Mrs. Erdogan, we'll put more information on, especially relative to the word ground. If you looked at our our uh, district website, our dashboard. We do have a thermometer, which is uh, calculating where we are spending uh, each month. Uh, but we'll, we're going to put more finite information on. We have some control areas. We'll, we'll let it put that on. It's all public information. And I think people will not be disappointed with that. Anyone else want to make any comments or questions? Dr. Seidberg, uh, Mr. Richwine. Shakespeare, which is odd for me since I wasn't an English major, but it's a tale told by idiots full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Uh, the attempt here to smear the district, the performance financially of the district, academically of the district, is an insult to everyone on the board, everyone in the administration, and the teaching staff, and goes back through other <coughs> superintendents, other board members, and other staff members. This is uh, a pretty thorough smear. Uh, I started delving into a lot of uh, information I've had uh, from my 15 years on the board, and I'm a bit of a pack rat sometimes to the point of not being able to find things. But uh, one of the issues, I'll try to take them in, uh, in the order that uh, Dr. Seidberg addressed them. Uh, for the SAT scores, I, I was aware that the test changed in 2006, and it's a pretty well-known uh, fact of standardized testing that when you change the test, the scores go down, and they did indeed go down. And I attempted to find out what some of our neighboring districts with similar uh, characteristics we're doing on their SAT scores. So I, I looked up Parkland and Southern Lehigh, and their scores were comparable to ours. Uh, we're higher than them on some in some years and lower in other years, but all in all, they are right there with us. And uh, I, I, I believe that uh, as long as we are scoring in that range, I, I have no concern about a test that really has not become, or is not as important as it used to be. Um, and with Albertus um, being a, uh, a school that, uh, what is it, an improvement status one, uh, I believe that would give uh, the families of students there the option of transferring to another school within the district. Uh, I believe it's my understanding that no parents opted 